Hi, everyone, and welcome to Signature West Podcast. I'm your host, Sam West from Palm Springs, California. My guest today is uh, Sam Randolph and Tim Brandon, and they are a married couple with uh, the father of a young teen. His name is Alex, and they are here with us to share what's it like for gay parenting. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So... You guys met in 2012. Yes. Uh, was it love at first sight? Yes. <laughs> That's good. I wasn't sure. Um, and whose idea was it, or who was the first one to bring up having a child um, in the relationship? That would be me. Um, when we first met, I still was wanting to have a kid. And so I actually wanted to be with a partner who wanted a kid as well too. And um, I mentioned that to him and he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that as well too. And so yeah. um, about a year later, we, we started to look into it. So when you first got together, obviously you come from different backgrounds. Were there any <clears throat> challenges from either background or family members or people said like, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Yes, there were some uh, people questioning why. Which, we want to which do side? This. Which side? I would say both. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, mostly it was um, you're too old, you don't need a kid, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, How old are you? I am 57. And I'm 46. Well, this year I'll be 46. Yeah. You're too old to have a kid, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it was because we hadn't had, uh, we, we didn't have kids like in our 20s or 30s. Right. right. And so the, the age that we were, that we were at, um, not having kids, I think people were like, you know, what's the point at this point kind of thing. Um, some people were just, you know, some of my friends were, I love my kid to death, you know, but are you sure you really want to have a kid? You, you're, you know, you're going to lose a lot of your freedom that you're accustomed to and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that. Um, we talked what, about, yeah. What was your answer when they said you're too old to have a kid? I don't remember what I'd say. They, um, I think I probably agreed with them, but I said, this is something that I want to do. And um, this being with Sam is my um, second long-term relationship. And um, I thought that, you know, this was my chance to have a kid. This would probably be my last chance because if I wait any longer, I will be too old to right, have right. a kid. Right. So you guys looked at diff different options. It wasn't just like, when you start thinking about it, you're like, are we going to adopt or are we going to do surrogate? And I think you end up fostering, adopting or fostering? Fostering to adopt, yes. yes. Fostering yeah. to adopt, which we I know it's a very tedious process. It is. It's, uh, it is very tedious and it takes a while. Right. And um, we did look at, you know, other, we researched other options like surrogacy, but uh, that's very expensive. Very expensive. Yes. So, um, we realize that there are already kids who need homes already in the foster system. So we decided to do foster to adopt. So you met your young boy, his name is Alex. Yes. And that was after you were together for a year. And is if you have to, I don't want to say try him out. You have to, I guess, try him out is a, is a term, right? I mean, sounds well, terrible. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, I guess yeah, it is. yeah. He has to live with you for a while before you guys, you know, before, to make sure that you're seeing people, and, <clears throat> right? Right. Yeah. We um, so we start the process about a year later, but we weren't matched, is what they call it, match with um, a child until um, 2016. <clears throat> yes. So 2013, we started the process. So 2016 was the first time we were actually matched with um, a, ch uh, a child. And then we started to have visitations and then he came to live with us. And then that was a whole process of, I guess that's when the foster to adopt really kind of started. 
any challenges in the process of being gay and being inter interracial marriage? No, we no. we didn't um, we didn't really have any challenges, but our social worker um, did tell us that we could have challenges with certain with possible certain um, maybe even foster foster parents who, who might not approve um, might all of a sudden might want to adopt the kid just because of that. Um, but we fortunately didn't have any of those issues. But it could have been. It could have been, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And been. not so much because of the because of um, DCFS, but more so it could be more so because of um, other people involved, maybe like you know his his family, you know. Might so is, is his family still a, a, around? There, you guys know them? Did you get to know them, or they were they're nowhere to be found? We were not. We know who they are, but we. A meeting, a visitation never occurred, so um, we don't have any relationship with them whatsoever. Do they know who you are? Yes, uh, they know who we are, but they never, we never even met. They there's never no, came. There's to, no. Yeah, they never came to the court to make an appearance or anything like that. So wow. we never got to um, meet his mom um, or um, his his mom's side of the family because that's who was more involved. So he was five years old when you first uh, brought him in. Yes. Yes. And now he's thirteen-ish. No, no, nine. He's nine. Nine? nine? I did. Um, nine. I did the math last night. Why am I so bad at math? Okay, he's nine. <laughs> oh, okay. maybe because I didn't give you the actual birth date. I just. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's your fault. Okay. So, <laughs> so when you first he first came over, what was that like? What's the first serious conversation you guys had? Obviously, he's very foreign to, to the two of you. Um, five years between how many homes? I'm not sure. At least two. You'd be the third. So, well, what there, was the first series? <clears throat> I'm sorry. There, yeah, he had. He was in the foster system. Basically, he was taken away from his mom when he was four months old. Oh, so he was very young. And then, yes. yes. Um, so he was been placed in several foster homes. I think so what was the came. first? So what was the first <laughs> interaction? Obviously, besides being silly and being happy, when you want to get serious, okay, like we are the adults here, we're in, you know, how did that orchestrate, and how did it go? Well, it starts off that uh, once we are matched, as Sam said, then um, the social worker coordinated our first meeting with. Alex and his foster mom and we met at a local park and um, we we just we played with him we yeah. met him and <laughs> but, when you, but, but once he moved once he moved in how did we talk about the gay topic these two dads here where's the mother if there's a mother yeah. how did that go so we um, I my former supervisor um, he um, wrote a book, um, a, um, a young kid's book ver uh, version, Two Daddy Frogs, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Two Daddy Frogs. And so I would read that to him. And he actually really started to enjoy it. But it, it pretty much told the story about um, two daddy frogs wanting kids, couldn't have kids themselves. And so they adopted two little kids. And, and that's how you guys them. kind of merged yes. in. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yes, and we would find different books about what are different kinds of families yes. um, and kind of that's how we we would talk to him about those things but he never asked a question about where um you know where's the mommy and things like that actually he did he used to, in the beginning he would call me mommy <laughs> i think because i had hair uh -huh. and so he, he would just he would call me mom and i just i just went along with it did he ever ask about his biological parents and and what happened to them and why he is what he is no, um, we are expecting that question to yeah. come up. Sometime. But so far, at nine years old, it has not come up. No, no. and we, he has a life book that we would um, show him pictures and read to him. And he, every once in a while, will take it out. But he still has never really asked, where's my mom? Who's my mom? Is so he mom knows mom? that you guys adopted him from the foster home, which whatever yeah. those parents were. <laughs> and he knows who they are because he was five years old. Yeah. He has a little bit of memory of that, who they that that life was like 
but yet he hasn't really brought up the brain hasn't came back to say, well, wait a minute, what happened before that foster home? Right. It hasn't right. gotten that, that back that far back yet. Interesting. Right. And um, one thing to note is that if we do ask him, like he may say, if he brings up the topic of a mom or mother, and we ask him, so uh, who's your mom? And he will refer to one of his foster mothers as his mom. Now or then? The past few times that he's brought it up, or that we've asked him about it. So, because he really doesn't know his biological mom, because he was taken away from her um, at such a young age, four months old, and um, she really didn't make the effort to come and, you know, try to reconnect with him uh, with, you know, with the social worker. So do you guys ever explain, do you clarify that, that your foster mom is not really, do you ever get into it, that's not really your mom, or do you just let it go? I just let it go. Just let it go for now. now. And yeah, when he's ready to, um, <clears throat> to figure it out, find out more, when he has more questions about it, mm -hmm. we'll talk with him about it. But I'm sure that's going to be several conversations building on each other. Yeah, I, I, go ahead. So now we're in a generation that everything, you know, I have black parents, friends of mine, I have straight parents, friends of mine, mm -hmm. but it's always been the case that it's a different conversation when you have an African-American child. Black Lives Matter, have you guys had that conversation yet? We, what is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we live in Long Beach and uh, after uh, the incident with George Floyd, they did uh, protest downtown Long Beach and uh, they did riot. Um, the day after, um, Alex and I both took off from school and uh, we went down and we helped um, with the cleanup. So did he, ever, did he ask what is that about, what, why is this happening dad? Or who's, who's, uh, who's Floyd and why did he die? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, we had a you know, very serious uh, uh, conversation about that. And, that, and <clears throat> while we were walking downtown, we walked past his former barbershop that had been burned down, and where we took Alex to get his uh, haircut. Does so. Alex go to your school? No. Okay. He goes to a, a local elementary school. Yeah, that we can walk to. It's literally down the street from where we live. Okay. Um. Who determines who talks to who? I'm like, there's a serious topic that comes up, whether it's Black Lives Matter or two weeks ago, the invasion of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do it together or does one, Sam, you do this? No, Tim, you do this. Do you guys have a, like sort of an understanding of assignment or is it, a, is it team's work? It's just, it's, I think it's more of a teamwork. I mean, I think it just depends on um, maybe sometimes who's home or yeah. if he starts to ask questions, you just go with it. Um, I don't think he either, either one of us, um, I think we feel comfortable with bringing up topics with him um, or answering a question with him. He's, um, he is a curious kid, but sometimes but it's interesting the stuff that he's curious about. So some of this stuff he hasn't been too vocal about or, or asking a lot of questions. No. Um, so we haven't had to like have a lot of conversations with them, but We've had some conversations with him definitely about the what's the um why is why he can't for example um have his um little uh, dark gun in the street dark gun you, you know like the little nerf, nerf guns, guns the little nerf guns and stuff oh. like why you can't carry it outside right. why you take it to the park take it to the park right um you know you can play with it in the house but there's no way in hell you're taking it to the right. park right. Right. Outside, right. 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 right um We've had those conversations with him. I don't think it's still quite cooking com mm -hmm. completely, you know, because it's still kind of it's kind of like what's going on with COVID, right? I think he understands to a degree, but it's still like I still want to play with my friends, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, are you the, are you guys the only parents that are gay parents in the school that he's in? The, well, I don't know of any others. Yeah, I don't know of any others, and there there could be. But, but I, no. I think we're, yeah, we're, everyone knows about us and we're- So how was the adjustment for him in school? How was, how was the adjustment for him in school when he first started? 
What do you mean by that? Yeah. How did he adjust? I mean, he, when he goes to school, you say, well, who's your dad? Who's your mom? Oh. And, you know, most kids will say, my mom's dropping me off or my mom is picking me up. Or mm-hmm. there's always sort of like this generic routine of behavior. Uh, he might seem like the outsider. Does he feel like he's the outsider? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. He's, he's a very social kid. Yeah. He has lots of friends at school. And uh, they, uh, they see me in the, when pre-COVID, I was the parent who would come into the classroom and help out a lot. I would read to the kids as well as um, do projects and stuff with them. So I was the, 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 um, the dad uh, in, the, in the classroom. Right. But then Tim would pick them up in the evening times. And so they would see that basically pops is what his name is. They would see him in the evening time. And so I think that over the time, the kids started to connect. You have two dads. We asked him the question, does he get teased? And he said he really doesn't. Um, mm-hmm. the, I don't, I can't, I think they just kind of go with the flow. It's kind of interesting. Because some of the kids, even um, one or two of the kids have actually been over the house and it never has been, there's never been any questions. He's never been ostracized. Right. Um, at the school that we were at, yeah. So when you yeah. asked him, Alex, do you ever get teased? Did he ever say to you, like, Dad, why would I get teased? I mean, does he connect the dots? I'd be teased because? Mm-hmm. No, 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 he didn't. I think there was a, a, he did say that someone did ask about his mom. Okay. And I forgot what he said. I can't remember what he said. But it was one of those things where it was, I think he commented and then, and they just kept moving. It was kind of like, oh, okay. And then they started, they kept playing. So, so from a therapist's point of view, Sam, do you think he's gonna, at some point, um, I know for me, uh, my childhood was very rocky and it, I didn't, you know, I spent years sort of avoiding talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I finally, you know, burst. Do you think at some point he's gonna like, he's suppressing all this now, but at some point he's gonna like lash out or not even lash out, you know, mm-hmm. There, I think mm-hmm. that's possible. Yeah. I think probably definitely in his teenage years, when he's more into the teenage years, preteen, you know, the hormones are going. There's probably more recognition, more more understanding of the world around you. Around that time, you, you know, you're learning about um, history. The There's the social pecking order starts to happen. And so I think at that point, he might start to ask questions or to, um, maybe, you know, have this attitude and stuff, and then we'll have to try to work through and see right. what actually is underneath the, the right. surface, right. which is good that I'm a therapist. I right. mean, a lot of times, mm-hmm. and he's a teacher, because a lot of times the conversations we have with him, um, when he is not so receptive, we, we pretty much <laughs> kind of figure out how to, how to um, still be able to pull it out of him and see right. what, you know, what's going on, or just take a break and go, he'll come and talk to us when he's ready. And a lot of times that's what ends up happening. Right. So did he spend much schooling pre-COVID or COVID came like just in time when he didn't really have much schooling before or friends and social life? Oh no, he, so he was in kinder when we met him and he was, had been in, um, in school the, the whole time. Um, I kept him in, well, we kept him in the Gardena School District, which is where he was, before we moved him to Long Beach. So we waited until he was going to first grade before we moved him, just to kind of have a, a, an easy transition. Right. So he's been at, that, at the same school now, he's in fourth from first grade on, and the teachers have all been really great. Um, he is, has a um, learning disability, so they um, already, at, from the back, gave him resources mm-hmm. to try to help um, catch him up and is that um, because of just a birth thing or is that because of the the uh, the background environment that he's been brought into it was a combination of, of of the two his first placement was pretty stable he was there for three years um but he does suffer from fetal alcohol spectrum he's on the spectrum for that and so that can help that can contribute to um behavioral as well as um, learning disability. And so um, he struggles with reading the most. And so that's, the, that's where a lot of the focus um, has been placed. But regarding adapting, he adapted very quickly. Like a lot of the teachers and parents that we've met, um, they were really shocked <laughs> that he 
wasn't our biological kid. They were like, oh, I felt like the trend, like you can't tell, they were like, you couldn't tell me that you, that he was just recently put place with you guys. Um, so yeah. So then COVID comes and mm -hmm. school gets shut down. And then that's a whole different kind of parenting going on. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and school is still shut down, right? Or no? Yes. Yes. I think it is, right? yes. So it's been now almost a year. We're going in a year. Oh, yeah. yeah. March will be a year. March will be yeah. a year. Yeah. March, it was March 18th when I remember the day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was right. So in break, I think. Yeah. how is he? How is he coping with that, A, and how are the three of you coping with that, B? <laughs> I'll let you. <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're all home, and um, I'm, you know, I'm in one room teaching my classes, and uh, Ale uh, Alex is with Sam, uh, you know, trying to you know, get online and be in his classes, and... Uh, and then Sam tries to do his work when he can. Yeah, that's been difficult. So um, because of his lack of focus a lot of times or he just gets distracted, it's constantly sometimes coming out. Hey dad, this is what we're doing in class today. Or hey dad, I need, you know, and I'm like, go to your teacher, tell her, <laughs> explain it to her. And you're like, this is, I'm not your teacher. You know, I'm trying to, trying to keep that separation there, but it, it, it's a struggle and then when school is over with, he has, you know, either homework or spill stuff from, you know, that, from the day that he has to do. And, um, yeah, so it's, that's where we switch. So <laughs> and once I, I'm done with school, yeah. with my classes, then I come and I help Alex with his homework and other school work. And, and, and how has been the, I go into work. And how has been the learning disability that he's been focused on before is being implemented now that he's at home. Well, he's still so, able to see his uh, resource specialist, uh, resource specialist teachers, right. with, you know, a couple hours a week. Yeah, to, um, he sees his RSP Monday through Thursday, and his speech teacher Tuesday and Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. And then you we know, also um, have him in tutoring Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> You know, it's been said, and I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's true. I don't have any children, but I think it's true that teens or younger, they're going to have the easiest time transitioning to the new normal because that's all they know. You and I knew a lot more that we're being deprived of, but they mm -hmm. don't know any better. That's all they've seen. Is that, do you, would you agree with that? I, I think it's true. Um, they may be able to, for example, with Alex, he may be able to adapt fairly well to online learning, but he misses going to school. And he's mentioned it, that he wants to go to school. He wants to play with his friends. Um, and I'm sure that will come back, but I'm thinking like that, you know, wearing a mask all the time or um, uh, oh, social yeah. distancing all the time, that kind of behavior which they didn't know any better before. We never, to us, it's like, what, what is that? You know, to me, it's an inconvenience no matter how I slice, the, the slice it. So for them, it's okay. I, mm -hmm. I just think it's easier for them to transition with that. Yeah. Um, that's the good I, side. I would probably agree. I would probably agree probably more so middle school age and younger. Um, I think your high schoolers, they'll, they can adapt, but I think it's not going to be as quickly well received with or easy with them as it is with maybe the younger ones because um you know you, you get a little bit more stubborn and in your head when you're a teenager more so than when you're um, like alex's age like elementary school kids I right think definitely gonna be easier with this new the new normal mm -hmm. washing your hands wearing a mask right. you know, being social that's what we're saying teens and younger yeah. like teen de de defining teen i would say probably like i don't know maybe 14 or younger but once you get to be 16 yeah. or 18 even 20 you're like yeah. you know i miss my i want to do i want to go out with my friends into that bar right. and it's a, mm -hmm. i miss going to them and i don't care what you guys say kind of a thing yeah right and that definitely happens i i've seen it since COVID with definitely my high schoolers they're pretty much they all adults uh, yeah, our adults. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yep. <laughs> Would you want to have more? <laughs> I'm sorry, was that a joke? 
you know, because everyone <laughs> asks us that, when are you going to have another one or don't you want to have more? And we go, no, no, we're, we're, we're good. good. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Yeah. I mean, if we were, if, if it had been maybe five years earlier or something like that, I think, yes. But we, we're a little bit, um, is it pragmat pragmatic? Pragmatic. So we're pra thinking practical? about practical too. Practical. We're thinking about our, our future, you know, by the time he's in high school, like the end of high school, um, Tim will be eligible, ready to be able to retire if he wanted to. And so thinking of those kind of things, you're like, uh, if we have another one, especially that's younger than him, that's going to push us, you know, um, that's going to push us further out. The, the rhythm of everything, um, I think we'll throw it off. Plus two, you know, financially speaking, um, it's just easier. We've been able to travel a lot with just him and adding another to that mix would make would make it very difficult and yeah, we've had that conversation with him too i don't think he quite understands it yet but i'm like you know if we have a if you do have a sibling all this stuff will be cut in half that you get to do you know so the topic came up oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. just more recently mm -hmm. um not when he was younger but recently he's been i want a brother mm -hmm. you know oh wow yeah how did it feel to say to him what you just said well if we do we can't go to disneyland anymore <laughs> yeah you know it um i would have loved to you know and i think i might even say it, you know it, yeah i understand i said but these are the things that unfortunately if we had another kid that we wouldn't be able to do and i said this will eventually probably fade as you get older and recognize the uh the opportunities you get to have just being the only kid um, Tim's the only child. Um, I am the only um, child of my mom and dad, but I do have older brothers, but they didn't live, they didn't grow up, they didn't live with me. So I pretty much was in the house by myself um, most of my life. Yeah. So, and I, I used to want to have, you know, um, siblings and stuff in the house and all that stuff. It's and not again, all that, believe me. It's not. Yeah. As I got older, yeah. I was like, hmm, I kind of like having my own room, you yeah. know, <laughs> in space. Yeah. 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 Guys, thank you so much for doing this. It's very enlightening and um, it's not an easy task. I, I, I know for myself, I always wanted a child. Um, I still do, but uh, can't do it alone. I wouldn't do it alone. Um, so who knows, maybe one day I'll look you guys up and, and ask for your, um, for your helping hand. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for telling your story. Till next time, everyone. See you next week. Stay safe and say hi to Alex for us. You guys. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for inviting us. Bye-bye.